The smudging of seagrass connects us with the Creator and our ancestors have been using for thousands and thousands of years. Everything I've learned is first-hand experience from the elders. Nothing comes from books or computers. It's all authentic. Just like our medicines are powerful, knowledge is power. Our medicines are important to us because they are healthy. I feel one with nature when I'm out there by myself in peace and quiet. Medicine picking is my role in life. It's my gift from the Creator, and I'll never stop doing it. My name is Stanford Pronto. I'm from Pine Creek, Manitoba. My spirit name is Mukwagizas, and I'm of the Brown Bear Clan, and I'm a medicine gatherer for Pine Creek and surrounding areas. I started doing medicines when I was around 26 years old. I quit drinking. I wanted a better life for my kids. So that's why I started doing wild organics to keep me away from alcohol, to bring up my kids in a peaceful, better environment. And that's what I've taught them over the years and hopefully they'll, and that's what they're gonna teach their children. Yeah, I'm Jericho Pronto. I'm from Pine Creek First Nation. I was about six, seven years old when I learned about medicines and I learned it from my dad, him teaching me what he knows and wanting me to pass it down from generation to generation. And it's it's good to be out there in the, in the wild with my dad, spending son and father time together, learning. I know about 20, 22 medicines so far. My dad knows about 40. I know about half of what he knows. The Creator gave me a gift, the knowledge of medicine, the curiosity of it, to know every medicine I could possibly know. I currently do roughly 44 different wild organics now, which I've picked and used and dried and I've used on myself. So before I've ever given somebody a medicine, I've already drank that medicine, I've used that medicine, and I know it's safe to use. It means a lot to me because I know that there's not a lot of people that do it around here and I'm lucky to know, be one of the people that know. It is important to keep the tradition of medicine gathering because that is the way of our people, that is our culture, our livelihood, our spirituality, and that is who we are and it's kept us healthy for thousands of years. I don't pick wild medicines around under hydro line. I also don't pick around garbage dumps, I don't pick around railway tracks, I don't pick around roads because of the cars, cars and trucks passing by that pollute the medicines as the dust flies by. You gotta keep your hands clean. Every time you use the washroom with any organic, you wash in between. So if you're gonna pick and then use the washroom, then you wash your hands with it. So you carry a lot of water with you out there. Another protocol is uh, you usually cut the roots of uh, every organic where you've picked it. You cut the roots out, you leave the roots there because that's where you've picked it. But the first protocol is the offering of tobacco and a prayer. That's the first thing. The purpose of my offering of tobacco is to show respect to the Creator, to Mother Earth, to the elders and to the children that are gonna learn this. It's out of respect to that plant because I'm killing that plant off, so I'm making an offering of tobacco because that plant is giving its life. Uh, because all, uh, all plants got energy, all plants are alive, all plants got feelings, and they all got spirits. So when you're taking away that spirit, you're making that offering out of respect to that plant because you are taking its life for somebody else to get better or for prayers. <laughs> At the age of 26, I was taught about balsam bark by my elders. They taught me about balsam bark to pass it down to others, to help people, and to pass down their knowledge of medicines. Balsam bark grows in the boreal forest. It, it looks like a pine tree, but it's got a bluish color to it. The things you need to pick balsam bark is a knife and a hammer and a clean tarp and a piece of string. And you also need to make an offering of tobacco 
and a small prayer. I believe balsam bark has a spirit. That's what the offering of tobacco is used for the spirit of the balsam tree. Every tree has an aura, every plant has an aura, every plant has feelings. So I got the, tarp, the clean tarp around the tree as a blanket. So when I cut into the bark, all the all the bark all the bark will peel. I'll peel the bark right onto the right onto the clean tarp. It'll fall. It'll drop under. The reason why I chose this tree is because it's a mature balsam tree ready to be harvested. You can find a balsam tree pretty much anywhere in Northern Canada. The reason why I peel the bark on the south side of the tree is so that it'll heal faster, stay healthy and we'll be able to peel it for years to come. And that's how I harvest balsam bark. Once I harvest balsam bark, I take it home, I dry it on a clean tarp. I dry it for about five days so it's nice and crispy. And then I then I take it, then I grind it with a cheese grater, or I use a grinder, but preferably a cheese grater and a little bit of elbow grease. I grind it onto a clean plate. And then I take that grinded, grinded material and I put it into clean jars and I label it balsam bark and I write down what it's used for, how much needed for per cup or per pot if need be to save for later. For a single serving of balsam bark, I would use a quarter teaspoon of grinded balsam bark per cup of hot boiling water. I'd let it steep for five minutes, let it cool, then drink and enjoy. I would drink balsam bark to clear my chest cold, to clear my cough, to help with a sore throat and sore sinuses if I have them. Balsam bark tells our people in the past to stay healthy, to fight off diseases, to fight off colds in the winter, to live through those harsh winters where we had chest colds. Without it, we probably wouldn't have seen many winters. We didn't have a pharmacy back in the day. Our people had to find out all these medicines on their own. I feel I have great privilege learning all these medicines from an elder that I think of, because I think about the people that had to, had to use themselves as guinea pigs, the people that had to, before us that died, just to learn how to heal a kidney. The kind of tree you'll find wild kidney medicine is on the birch tree. It grows in the boreal forest in my own community. I find it deep in the forest. 
And I like to go deep in the forest because there, nobody's been there, nobody's touched this medicine, nobody's touched the tree, nobody's spoiled it. Well, the first stage picking kidney medicines is the offering. I make, a, I make an offering of wild tobacco and a small prayer of thanks. I give thanks to the Creator, I give thanks to the elders that taught me, I give thanks to Mother Earth, which she provides, and I give thanks to the children that I'm gonna teach these medicines to. When I harvest kidney medicine, I go on from the south and I, I use a knife and a hammer and I, I tie a tarp, a clean tarp right around the tree. I don't wanna lose any of the, any of the wild medicines. And then I cut, I cut a notch down the middle of the tree and then right across, right around it. And I peel, I peel that bark right around, off the off the the birch tree. Um, after this stuff right here, this, this inner bark. But also, I'll still be taking this, so I could make something out of it. Nothing I use, it gets wasted. It's all being used one way or the other. And then there's this green inner bark that I scrape off. I scrape it off onto the, and it's usually soft. So I, I scrape it off, it falls onto the tarp. Everything will fall onto the tarp right around the tree. But I don't, I don't try to kill the tree. I try to save, uh, I try to save the tree, and take only enough that I need, and then I'll move on to a different tree. When I bring the kidney medicine home, I dry it on the floor on clean tarps. I usually dry it for about five days. Once, once I take the dried medicine home, I grind it. Well, I usually use a cheese grater. I use a little bit of elbow grease. I grind it, and then I put it in clean jars. And for a single person, for a single, for a single uh, dose of this medicine, I use a quarter teaspoon of dry kidney medicine per cup of one cup of boiling hot water. And if I'm gonna make it, make a, a pot of it, maybe store some for later, I use about five teaspoons of kidney medicine per cup of boiling hot water. Once the kidney medicine is done boiling, I like to let it steep for a while, and then I let it cool, and then I strain it. I usually use a clean cloth and I strain it into a, a bigger jar, bigger like a bigger jar, so I can keep it for future use. After I've done taking my my cup for the day, and when you're really sick, you could take two cups a day. You could drink one in the morning, one in the evening, and then put it away for future use. That's the proper way that I've been taught to use kidney medicine from my elders. And that's the way I'm going to keep using kidney medicine and that's the way I'm going to teach my kids, our kids, to keep using kidney medicine. I use kidney medicine for myself, my elders, my parents, whoever needs it. And also I do trades with it. It'll strengthen your pancreas. It'll it's a detoxify medicine for the kidneys. It's especially main, main use is for the kidneys.
people get sick all all year round so well, if they get sick and they come ask for your help you got to give them your help because that's what that's what you're about if you're a medicine harvester well usually in the winter mother earth sleeping eh, and all the plants are sleeping but uh, if you're sick you're gonna go out for your medicine you're not gonna wait if you know where it's growing if you know how it looks if you know how the root looks then you go pick it because if somebody is sick the crater would rather have you healing somebody I'll go out in the winter time, summer time, spring, fall, doesn't matter when, I'll go out there find where it is. If you're sick, I'm gonna go wake up that medicine and I'm gonna heal you. I'm gonna try my best to heal you. Cause that's what the creator put me here for. I like helping people with my medicines because it's to better them and to better myself. I feel better when I know I'm helping out other people. Picking wild organics is a really uh, good stress reliever because you're out in nature. This is the cleanest air you could be around, is in the forest. Medicines helped me a lot growing up, learning about my culture and smudging, cleansing myself, learning how to help other people with the medicines I know. When I pick, I pick for not only myself, but I pick for the community and for family. I use it for myself, my family, elders, especially elders, uh, for the community, for whoever needs it, and also for trade. I would trade for tobacco, I would trade for gifts, I would trade for money, as long as I had a tobacco trade with the money. What they're doing with the tobacco trade is that they're, they're taking over that offering that I've made to Mother Earth, so now it's their medicine. It's their offering, they made that offering. People have said that uh, you're not supposed to sell medicine or trade for money, but how could I go into a store and trade for, have a bundle of wheat cake with me or sweetgrass, sage, whatever I picked, how could I go to a store and trade for eggs, bread, butter, milk? So what I do is I exchange, I exchange it into money, the medicine into money, then I do trade money for bread, eggs, milk, and whatever I need to survive. Sage has been around for thousands and thousands of years. It's a gift from the Creator, and it's one of the four sacred medicines. Our people use this in most of their thoughts and prayers. And it's also used to protect your house, to scare out five bad vibes if there's any. Other uses I use sage for are garnish and gravy, sauces. It could also be used in turkeys, stuffing, chicken. It's, a, it's just great natural herb. Sage is important to our culture because it's one of the main four medicines that we need to smudge with and to pray, to thank the Creator and everything in Mother Earth and what we have today. I like picking sage because it makes me feel good that I know that I'm picking what my dad taught me and passing it on and helping out elders with sage, giving them for offering and to help out other people with it that need it. That also smudge. I give it to the community, elders, I also trade with it. And by when I mean trade, I trade. People give me money for it, but they always give me an offering of tobacco because I can't take sage in the store and trade for groceries. So I got to exchange that sage into money so I could exchange the money into groceries. That's, that's the only way I trade. But I always make sure they give me an offering of tobacco with money or with a gift. Sage, you'd find it in like a dry, sandy area. The, the first protocol of picking sage is an offering of tobacco and a good prayer. Sage has spirit, sage has feelings. So when I make an offering of tobacco and that, I'm, that I'm, giving, I'm giving respect to that sage for taking its life. So I'm releasing its spirit, but I'm doing it out of respect. That's what the tobacco and the prayer is all about.
meant a lot to me to do Sage with my dad and know that it's making him proud of me that I'm learning and picking and bringing home what he knows and sharing it with the people. You got enough for the polo. Once I'm done taking the plant out of the ground, I'll tie them in coin-sized bundles, and then I'll tie them with a raffia straw. A raffia straw is natural, it's a natural straw. So when they're tied up in bundles, you could burn this raffia straw with the sage. If I plan on leaving the root system there, I'll break them off at the root, the root ground level. But uh, over the years, I've been transplanting sage to different areas closer to where I live. So, I, so when I'm an old, old man and I want to take out my grandkids, I don't have far to walk. So I got a place for sage, a place for mint, a place for wike. I've taken some from hundreds of miles and I brought them closer where there was none growing before. And it is growing now. So I have access to that plant and it's closer for me to get to. It's important for sage to keep thriving in our culture. It's one of our four sacred medicines. And I know it's gonna keep on because I've instilled it in my son's hearts, their mind, body, and soul ever since they could walk. I've took them out there, I've taught them about medicines. So all the stuff that I've learned, and have I instilled it in their hearts to pass this knowledge down, that not to waste this knowledge on their self and to pass it down to the next generation to come. Sage was given to us, as all plants are given to us, as a gift from the Creator to heal ourselves, to feed ourselves, to provide for our children, to pass on this knowledge of sage. is one of the greatest gifts I could bestow upon my people. First of all, we gotta get our tarps and water and maybe lunches if we need it for out that long and then we head out to the sweetgrass fields. Once we're ready to head out, we get out there and we start picking. The first stage in picking sweetgrass is an offering of tobacco and a good prayer. Yeah, I'm just cleaning out the bottom of the grass here. It's called combing. It's a little faster. And then I hold it upside down and I comb out all the, hold it up and I comb, comb out all the spider webs and all the other weeds that might be stuck in there. Take another good look. Nothing in there, good. Then I put it down.
There's 21 strands in each braid because you separate them in seven. And the seven represent the seven teachings. So when you're using the sweet grass and praying with it, you're praying with the seven teachings. After I take it out of the ground, I clean the sweet grass and I tie them in bundles of 21, 21 strands in each braid, and then I hang them up to dry. You gotta hang it for a couple of days till it dries. If you don't braid them when they're dry and they're green still, they're gonna go black on you and they're gonna be no good. dry green them. That means drying without the sun. So you don't want the grass to turn brown. So that's called dry greening, drying in the shade. So they've been iron for a couple days now. They're ready to braid. They look nice and dry. We're gonna take them down and we're gonna start braiding them. It gives me great pride knowing that what I've learned will be passed down to others and that sweet grass will never die out. It's one of the main medicines used in our prayers, and it's one of the four sacred medicines in our culture. Smudging is a way to cleanse your body, praying. In our culture, it's praying, thanking the Creator. And a lot of people feel safe when you got sweet grass because it's part of their prayers. You could also have a bath in it, you could wash in it, and it, it's good for your skin, it makes you, it, it rejuvenates your soul. Boil the sweetgrass in a pot, like a tea, and wash your hair with the sweetgrass, and it'll strengthen your hair. I use sweetgrass for myself, for my friends, for my family, for my community, and for trade also. People trade me for gifts, People have traded me for money, but I always make sure they give me an offering of tobacco, even if they do give me a gift or money. Women are important in our society because they're the backbone of our society. They're the caregivers, they're the mothers, they're the daughters, they're the grandmothers. Now, women are more stronger than men, and teaching, teaching women about medicines is a privilege to me because I know women will carry on these teachings and pass it down to their children. And that's very important because I know I ain't wasting my life doing this. That the knowledge I've passed down comes from me, comes from my heart, my spirit, my mind. You know, I'm so in tune to the medicines. I just love doing medicines. I do it every year and I do it. Anybody that comes and asks for it, I'll get up and I'll take them out. 
I'll pick some for them if they need it. I've been cutting the roots and I've been transplanting them in a field. So years to come, when I'm, when I'm older, I'll have a field of sweetgrass. I'll be able to take my grandkids there and show them what sweetgrass is. And it won't be far because I've got certain spots that I picked over the years. We normally cut out the root system and we put it back in the ground where we pick the grass. But these root system we're gonna keep, we're gonna transplant in up north, farther up north where they have less grass. And we'll probably be planting these ones in the in Cormorant area. We've got a place picked out and hopefully we're gonna start a field of sweet grass growing there so people from over there don't have to come to the pot to pick grass. They could just pick grass in Cormorant area and hopefully move this grass even farther, farther up north the uh, root system from years to come, so they have grass to pick in the northern region. Hi, today I'm out here with my son Jericho Pronto, and we're out here picking wiki. Uh, the importance of Jericho coming out with us is that he passes on the knowledge that I pass down to him. He passes it down to his kids and so forth, pass it down. Because we don't want to forget this knowledge of medicines because it's very important that we know it and that we pass it down from generation to generation. And I always thank my elders, I always thank the Creator, Mother Earth for providing this medicine and for the children that are going to learn this medicine from years from now to keep passing it on and on so our people will never forget this medicine and it'll always be for us and I do this for our people my son is going to be taken over when I'm gone I like picking wiki with my dad because uh, it's, it's fun being out in the in the forest in the bush with my father having good times talking about medicines learning wiki is a really great plant it's it's an all season root you could pick it all seasons and it's one of the plants that are, one of the roots that are widely used by most of our people and other, other races, not just our people, but a lot of people use wiki. And I just love picking wiki. The first stage in picking wiki is an offering of tobacco and a good prayer. Of thanks to the creator, of thanks to the elders that taught us and thanks to the children that we're gonna teach and Mother Earth for providing this medicine. UK, we got to make sure we have all our tools prepared to dig and cut the roots off the UK so we could pull it out of the ground and we head off into the bush once we were prepared. UK usually grows in wet uh, muskeggy country. Kind of like marshlands but uh, usually around weeds, other weeds like the reeds. It's mixed in with that. Oh, when we get to it, we pick it out of the ground, uh, the water and the muskeg and that, and then we once we cut it out of there, we clean it off, cut off all the roots.
It's probably one of the hardest medicines to pick, but it's probably on the top of my list to pick because it's, it's fun. And I have a really happy time picking it. This is weak get cleaned right here, rough clean. Uh, our people have been using this for thousands of years. It's used for colds, it's used for to clear your block sinuses from your head. It's, it's also used for uh, sore teeth. It's used for many things. It's called an all season root. Some some people call it rat root, some people call it wegos. Uh, we call it wike. And the terminology for it is black flagstaff root. We put it in a bag, we take it back and we hang dry it. I usually tie it in two pieces and I hang them uh, to dry for about five to seven days. After I dry it, I, I make sure it snaps when I, when I break it so it's nice and dry and ready to use. And then I tie them in 10, uh, usually 10, 10 sticks per bundle and I go see the elders first because I have uh, the same elders and I go see the same ones every year, make sure they have a constant supply of weak medicines. Uh, I've traded Wike in the past for people have given me gifts. Some people have given me money, but they've always made sure they gave me an offering of tobacco with the money or gift because they're taking over the offering that I've made to the creator that I've made to Mother Herd for providing this medicine. By trading Wike with tobacco, they're honoring and respecting this medicine that they're going to be using, even if it is with money. You chew it with a little piece of it and you just keep chewing it until the juices come out of the, the wike and then you just drink the juices. It's pretty well one of the mainly used medicines of our people. I use a blender, I grind it into powder then I use a quarter teaspoon per cup of hot water. I let it steep for five to seven minutes then I drink. Well, I wait till it cools off so the wike when it's floating one at first and then it'll sink to the bottom so you don't have to drink none of the wike, you just get the juices. Some people say it's a bitter taste. Me, I just love the taste of wike. I suggest you use wike when you're sick, uh, especially when you're sick and usually once a day in the morning or even twice a day if you're really sick at once in the morning and once in the evening. An elder taught me from Camperville, his name is Leo Chartrand. He taught me about picking wike. He showed me where it was. He told me what to do, to make offerings, and I've been doing it for now probably 18, maybe 20 years now. I usually just take what I need. I, I try not to overtake from an area. I let it grow back. Sometimes I'll let an area grow back two years, three years, but I have other areas that I go to every year, so I rotate. Still today, we all use Wike, and we're still here today. Some people don't even go see a doctor. They just they count on all these wild organics for survival to beat their sicknesses. My knowledge of medicines is, is learned from elders. I haven't learned anything from books. I haven't learned anything from computers. It's all first-hand experience from elders that have come and gone. Some of them aren't with us anymore, and 
out of respect, I like to teach, and I thank them for what they taught me. And I want to teach teach it to others because I don't want it to be uh, I don't want it to be wasted knowledge. Some elders I've learned medicines from over the years. Dave Buck from the Paw, Edward Bite knows from the Paw. I've also learned some from Frank Nipanak from Pine Creek First Nation. I've learned some medicines from my grandma from Fairford First Nation. One of my great teachers of, of organics was Leo Chartrin. He's from Camperville. Uh, I really respect, I respect all my elders. But Leo taught me uh, quite a lot of different kind of medicines. And as soon as I want to learn a medicine, I asked him about a medicine. He would come and pick me up right away at his cost. I didn't even, it didn't cost me anything. As long as he knew I wanted to learn, he took me out automatically took me out and took me to his grounds and taught me right from first hand experience. My hopes by passing this on to my family and others is that they'll pass it on to others and keep it going on and on and on for another thousand years. The knowledge that I've learned, that's my hope. And I couldn't have did it without my elders teaching me, taking their time, their patience to teach me. The inspirations that makes me want to keep on doing medicines is my children. So they'll understand medicines and to pass it down. And so the knowledge that I've learned will last a thousand years. So I just want my elders to know that I've done my part. Medicines are important to me because my dad has been doing it for a while now and I want to pass on what he knows to maybe my kids and my kids could pass it on to my grandchildren someday. It made me feel good to have my son and my one of my friends, good friends with, with us picking medicines because I'm teaching her about medicines. I've been, I've been teaching my son since he was about six years old now. So he's 20 now and he's still right into it. So I'm really happy about that. I learned from my dad over the years growing up and he's learned from his elders in the community and my grandmother was a medicine woman too and so it's been passed down a few generations. I love my children very much and I've instilled it in their hearts to pass it down their, to their children and their children. You know, so I know what I'm learning is going to grow on to another hundred years or more. It's important to pass on the knowledge that I know about medicines so I'm not dying and killing that line of knowledge that I should be passing on to my kids and my kids should be passing it on to my grandchildren. I hope it inspires our people to not to hide their knowledge, to pass down their knowledge before it's too late. It's a privilege to teach people. Thank you, Dad, and I appreciate it. And I love you for teaching me what you know. And I'll pass it on one day to my family that I'll have. At least I know that 44 wild organics will not be forgotten and put aside and my boys will carry on when I'm gone. And that means the world to me. I give great thanks to my teachers. It was a privilege to learn from them. Some of them are gone now and I just like them to know that what you've taught me is gonna be passed down 100 years, maybe 200 years from now. And to me, to to all the, all the teachers I've had over the years, the elders, I'd like to thank my boys, my girls, for being patient with me in learning these medicines, for putting up with the bad days. We had some bad days, we had some good days. But all in all, we learned something that day, and it's a privilege to teach you boys these medicines. And I love you boys, and just pass it down. But never forget to give thanks to the elders that taught us. Jimmy Gutch, thanks for listening. <laughs>